Hi students, welcome to HSC Biology and Module 6, Genetic Change. This is video number 11 and we're going to be looking at the future of biotechnology. So what's important here is that we investigate uses and applications of biotechnology, past, present and future, including researching future directions of the use of biotechnology. So in this particular video, we'll look at some of the potential implications of current biotechnology that may change uh, in the future. The technology that I've chosen to focus on is one that I guess um, everybody is, which is the uh, CRISPR-Cas9 uh, DNA editing tool. It's one of the things that we can explain in at least a little bit of detail to try and understand what's going on and how the DNA can be changed and why we want to change it and what are some of the potential implications. This is a technology that's happening now and in fact uh, there's still a lot of things that are going on in order to try and regulate its use. Uh, and so it makes us a, a little bit easier for us to um, think about some of the potential future applications. Obviously unless you have a crystal ball you don't know what the future holds so we want to speculate about how we might use this technology um, or at least extend our use of the technology from what we're doing now into the future. CRISPR is a gene editing process and of all of the processes that we have and will look at in associated with biotechnology, this one is the most precise. So when you're looking for precision, uh, CRISPR is the one that you look for. It's much better than trying to sort of look at two individual um, males and female that uh, kind of have the, the qualities that you want, get them to breed if you can um, organise that and then hope that the offspring are going to kind of produce the sort of um, ideal traits that you're after. That, that whole idea of selecting bre selective breeding, domestication, um, even some things like artificial insemination and pollination, they're a little bit hit or miss. They're not precise. They don't necessarily target exactly the characteristics that we're after, or certainly they don't target the specific uh, regions of the DNA that we're after, other than in a very general kind of a way. And so that means that we we kind of uh, haven't got real precision. And that's one of the reasons why CRISPR has become such an important biotechnological tool. The CRISPR genes were discovered in bacteria, and you'd be aware of the fact that one of the things that we know about viruses is that viruses actually get in and inject their, their genetic material into the host's um, DNA and therefore um, when the host is replicating its DNA it's also making copies of the viral DNA. What we have is a little complex that we need to think of. So CRISPR, um, CRISPR kind of specifically refers to the section of the DNA and that's why we talk about uh, CRISPR-Cas9. So this one here, CRISPR Cas9. Now this is uh, a little complex that we need to think of and it includes um, specific sections of DNA, a guide RNA and the Cas9 protein. So this is a, a little package that we need to be aware of that all need to be used together. One of the important things about CRISPR to think about is that it works very similar, uh, similarly to a find replace function on your word processor, um, like Microsoft Word. That's very much how it works. It's looking for a specific thing, and when it finds that specific thing, it can do a couple of options then. It can actually um, cut and replace sections. It can make repairs and changes. There's a few different things that uh, the CRISPR can uh, can do, the CRISPR complex can do once it gets in there. But we need to make sure that it finds the right sections. So we do that by providing a piece of guide RNA um, that has that complementary nucleotide sequence to the DNA sequence that we're specifically looking for so that it can um, get in the protein or the enzyme can cut the DNA and we can target that specific section that we're after. And the consequence of this is that it's made the process of DNA recombination much more accurate and it's helping us to reveal the nature of even more genes um, than we knew before. CRISPR is an acronym. Uh, you know that uh, scientists love acronyms and, um, and this is a good one because you don't want to be talking about clustered regularly into space short palindromic repeats all the time. CRISPR is a much nice, easier, shorter version of that. 
The um, implications, and that's why we're talking about it here in the future uses of technology, are massive. And in fact, um, one of the important things that we need to distinguish when we're looking at these applications of CRISPR is the difference between changes in somatic cells and changes in the germline. We've already had a look previously at the consequences of both of these types of change to DNA and what that means both for the individual and then also for um, subsequent generations. And one of the things that's interesting about CRISPR is it's already starting to be used um, in some of these germline applications. And that means we just don't know what's going to be the ultimate result of some of these changes that we're making. So when we um, apply the, this acronym of CRISPR to DNA, we're looking for regions um, that are together within the genome that are regularly spaced, that are about 20 to 40 base pairs long, that are palindromic, which means they read the same left to right as they do right to left, and they um, occur over and over again. And these are the keys to identifying the CRISPR regions within the DNA. This is a nice little uh, graphic, and uh, I'm not gonna go through it in a lot of detail other than to say um, it's important that you identify some of the key components of uh, CRISPR. Uh, the guide RNA is really important to make sure you're finding that exact right piece. Um, there's the, um, the Cas9 itself is a very complex kind of, uh, it has a number of domains, um, that, uh, which is what we call these kind of different regions with specific functions within the, within the Cas9 complex. And it's about, it, the, the enzyme itself is about cutting. So whilst the, the Cas9 part of our CRISPR is a, a molecular shears, if you like, to cut the DNA, what's important is that it needs to know where. And that's, that's where we have to have this find function first. The thing that's very important is we need to know exactly what sequence we're looking for. And that's where the guide um, RNA comes in. There's a couple of associated uh, molecules that are um, part of the uh, CRISPR-Cas9 complex, things like the PAM sequence, which is a protospacer adjacent motif. Usually it's kind of a little marker. It's a, um, a, a something that kind of highlights the specific region of the DNA that we're looking for. Um, and there's a few of these kind of guides that help make sure that our process is as accurate as possible. Remember, the key to this is precision and accuracy, and those two things combined together are why we're using, we're increasingly looking at ways of using CRISPR in um, gene editing uh, processes. It means that once we found that little spot, we can cut sections out, we can um, glue those back together. In fact, what often happens is that um, CRISPR, the CRISPR-Cas9 a complex will actually allow the natural mechanisms for DNA repair to come in. So the cell basically has mechanisms for repairing its own DNA. And really that's all that, that has to happen once the, CAS, uh, once the CRISPR-Cas9 system has actually come in and taken out or made those little changes that we've uh, programmed it to do. But this is about future uses. So where is this going? Well, as I said, this is really crystal ball gazing and one of the things that uh, I think is, is always an interesting exercise. And, and once you start doing this thought, sort of thing, you realise that there are going to be some social and ethical implications of exactly how far we can take these sorts of technologies. And it's very important that we consider some of those uh, implications, especially in the area of personalised medicine. There's a difference, for example, um, in terms of curing disease, uh, questions about a disorder, which may not necessarily be debilitating, and then uh, what we might regard as more cosmetic change, things that, that people do just, um, you know, choosing the gender of the child, choosing the colour of their hair or their eye colour or anything else like that. Those sorts of things that, that really aren't uh, impacting on the health of the child, more on just personal preferences of the parents. We may be able to use CRISPR-Cas9 in the manipulation of the microbiome. We now know that we can get into these bacterial cells. Maybe we can do something um, to change the actual microbiomes. They can be um, the microflora that may be present in humans. They may also be part of um, 
uh, ecological systems, part of the way that um, humus is formed or broken down in a rainforest, for example. Biomanufacturing may also have um, some applications, especially in the areas of hormones. So hormone generation, hormone replacement therapies, um, generating things like uh, insulin, but also perhaps um, in looking at some of these disease cures where, we, where we're looking at um, maybe making some of these um, CRISPR-Cas9 complexes available in some sort of delivery mechanism that they can target specific cells, uh, specific somatic cells for um, uh, what we might call correction where possible. Uh, synthetic biology, where we're actually seeing if we can uh, produce in the laboratory some of, or at least replicate some of the important structures, uh, particularly in, in the area of prosthetics. Uh, so you might have seen the ear mouse, the little, little mouse with the ears growing on it. That's sort of an idea where we're actually being able to produce um, much more realistic kind of um, uh, replacements for uh, people who have suffered uh, or who need things like hip replacements and those sorts of things uh, and for gene therapies as well so specifically targeted things maybe for um, cystic fibrosis sufferers for example ways that we might be able to deliver these um, uh, I won't call them cures but treatments um, much more effectively and again as I've said before much more precisely Future is open um, and it's going to be driven largely by students like you. So it's really important that um, if these are sorts of areas that you're interested in, that you put your mind to what sort of things that these, uh, this sort of technology can do and how society might benefit some years into the future. Good luck with your thinking and thanks for watching.